Uh, in the last part of the video, I said that I would come back and read, not read, but tell you guys what I thought of the book so far. So I did finish the first chapter. Like I said, the words are extreme, the font, not words, the font is extremely big. Um, yes, this is a turby twist. This is how I dry my hair. <laughs> um, anyways, there's 14 pages for the first chapter. Um, it's very strange. Uh, and I thought I heard about it being strange before. I, I really don't know what this is about. This, I saw this on uh, Mercy's Bookish Musings. I will leave her channel link down below if you're interested in checking her out. Um, she reads mostly like literary fiction, um, short stories. She reads some sci-fi and like pretty heavy fantasy. Um, there are, there's a lot of books that I don't read that she reads, but I do like seeing her book hauls because she does like dark fantasy. And she shared this book with, uh, with us one year. I can't remember when she posted this book. And I think she said she liked it or maybe she bought it because the cover is so gorgeous and then decided to read it. Um, this is for the leaves on the cover. And uh, it's another weird book. I kind of want to, like, not DNF it, but like put it down and get the Immortalists instead because I think a thriller might be more interesting. But I don't know. Maybe I'll... I'll keep reading it and, and see how it goes. So far, it is taking place in this manor, in this giant house called Foxlow. And whomever is a part of this, there's like founders, so I think this is like a cult. Um, whoever founded this particular family, um, they have rules and things when you're a part of Foxlow. So there's two names. There's the one that you were born with and the one that the family gives you. And the one that you're born with you don't go by anymore. It's like it's almost like they replace your whole persona with their own. And there is something called leavers. So I guess those are the people that are no longer in the cult. Um, again, it, it's not called a cult in the book. God, my eyeball is itchy. Uh, but that's what... That's what it sounds like it is. There's a punishment called walking. Walk, what is it called? Uh, it's, it's, it's so weird. The spike walk. That's like your punishment if you do something naughty. And it's a, a wall with nails all sticking out of it. And then you have to brush your arm against all the nails until you bleed. And then the person in charge, one of the founders, is the one that tells you when you can stop. I don't like that. Um, and this poor girl, I don't know what her name was before, but her name is Green. Um, she has to do it because she tried to pierce her ears without asking, I guess. Um, Freya is the the villain, I guess, of the story, her and Richard, who are the founders. Um, and they just brought in a new baby. Now, I don't know where the babies come from, but I think the babies are the ungrown, I believe. That's their terminology. They call it the grown. I guess those are the people that are either adults and they have more say in what happens within the household, or they were the starters of the cult, and then the ungrown are the children, or maybe it's a term that represents that they came from outside. Maybe these kids are stolen and then raised in this family. I'm not sure where this is going or w what time period this takes place in. Um, but Green is our main character, and then she has a boy who... I guess is supposed to be her playmate and his name is Toby or October and um, yeah that's as far as I've gotten so far so this 
out of the, the three books, this is going in the back. Um, at first I thought I would make it to where, you know, I would count out the days of how the books are supposed to go, how many chapters I'm supposed to read per day in order to be done by the 30th when this readathon is over. And that's typically what I do, or I at least I used to do in the past with readathons. That way I could definitely keep up with the reading and all of my books would be done on the last day. But um, I've grown as a reader and I don't really like doing that anymore. I mean, I still read multiple books at a time, but I kind of don't want to set a limit on what I read because then I get stuck in a rut with the books that I hate, if that makes any sense. Because um, then I feel like I have to read them even though I'm not liking them or enjoying them, however you want to say it. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to continue to rate the books um, like I'm doing and then I will try to finish as much as I can of the book that I like the most um, within a day. So this this Monday is just going to be the um, the getting my feet wet in what books I am enjoying um, so far. All right, so the next book I will be picking up is Consumed by David Cronenberg. Again, I wish I could find the dinner, although I know people have said the dinner's not that entertaining, that it's it only takes place within a restaurant and it's the back and forth um, talking from the two families, which I don't know anything about, but cannibalism sounds fun and there's murder in here, so I'm hoping I'll like it. Um, but the font is super tiny. The margins are really small. Um, so we'll see. Again, it's always good to start a book and see if you're going to like it. Um, I like, I don't, and I've said this several times, um, in different videos. I don't like DNFing a book. I know people will say, uh, well, life is too short to continue with a book that you are not interested in. If the author really wanted you to like their book, they would have made it more interesting at the beginning so you're not like, like bored at the beginning. But I feel like that's, it's rude in a sense to say that because Everybody has their own taste, and an author can't predict what the reader is going to like. So some people really, really like slow-building books that get more intense as the um, the years go on. Why did I say years? Because <laughs> as the reading goes on, they like they like it to build and build and build until there's the climax. Um, so with that being said, I find that a lot of the times the books that I'm not enjoying at the beginning I really like towards the middle and the end is really good. Um, and then sometimes you get a book that really hooks you at the beginning and you're so into it and then you hit the middle and then you're like, God, this book is terrible now. And then you get to the end, you're like, well, I wasted that whole time. The book was so good at the beginning. So I try not to DNF something unless I absolutely know there's just no possible way that I'm going to finish it. Like some of the books that I had on my shelves that I had given away in the past, like The Goblin, for instance. That's high fantasy. I tried it. I couldn't get into it. I don't like the names of all of the characters. It was just too long, and so I finally gave up. There are a couple of books that I might be giving up on, um, only because they've been sitting on my shelves for so, so long, and it's not necessarily the writing that is getting to me. It's the, um, like the, the subject matter. You never know what kind of book it's going to be until, obviously, you read it. Um, but that just comes full circle. I feel like I'm being redundant. Uh, so yeah, let's just <laughs> start with Consumed and see how it goes. Where's my phone? It's on my computer desk. That means I have to get up. I hate getting up. I'm so tired. I might take a nap soon. So, timer. Whoa, one minute, Jeez. Uh, quick, quick 
like a like side side story here. Um, I have a iPhone 6. Yes, I have the iPhone 6. It's super, super old. Um, my battery dies so quickly. I Normally, I don't really care if my battery dies because I'm usually at home and I can just charge it. And I also just purchased a portable um, battery that I can always just plug my phone into. But it is quite annoying. And whenever you look it up online, like, why is my battery dying? It always says, check the battery usage and find out from the settings why it does that. But it's always, like, stupid things. Like, oh, Facebook is taking up 30% of... But my Facebook isn't even opened. So it's just running in the background, stealing all my battery. I don't understand technology, and I kind of hate it. Anyways, let's get into the 20 minute timer. I'm gonna set it and start reading. And then um, in the, 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 the coming days, I won't be doing so many um, reading things like this. Cause like I said, I think it's fun to watch, but I think it's super boring to film. And I don't know whether or not you guys like it. So there's that and start. For Carolyn. Hello, Carolyn. All right, chapter one. I must complain about these names. Uh, I'm not sure where this is published from. Does it say in the beginning? It says New York. 2015, oh, 2014. Ugh. Okay, so Naomi, perfectly fine uh, name, but then it's the apartment is owned by Celestine, Celestine, and Aristid, Arostegi, Stigai, Aristide. Orostegai. That that is too much of a mouthful to say. I don't like it. I don't mind authors giving us ridiculous names, and it might be uh, offensive on my part because people are called these in other countries, and that's normal for them. Um, so I should I shouldn't be like you know, teasing the name that's in here, but I always feel like I have to like give these people in the stories nicknames because there's no way I'm going to constantly say that mouthy word and I don't know how to pronounce it. So I ended up just calling like Celeste. That's not her name. Her name is Celestine, Celestine, but I'm not going to call her that in my head. I'm probably just going to skip her name completely. And if you want the reader to be invested in your story, you want them to be able to like the characters' names as well, right? I don't know. This doesn't seem like it was... Um, David Cronenberg is a Canadian filmmaker whose career has spanned more than four decades. He's filmed the movie Stereo, Crimes of the Future, Fast Company, The Brood, The Dead Zone, The Fly, Naked Lunch, M. Butterfly, Crash, A History of Violence, Dangerous Method, and Cosmo Cosmopolis. Cosmopolis? Cosmopolis. His most recent film is Map to the Stars. Now, I've heard of The Dead Zone. I've watched it. That's if, if I'm correct, that's the one from Stephen King. Um, although, I, I mean, I've seen the movie and the TV show of The Dead Zone. I've definitely seen The Fly. Uh, I didn't like Crash at all. And Cosmopolis stars um, Robert Pattinson, I believe, if, if I'm 
if I'm, because you know some movies have the same title, so if this is the one that he wrote, or, you know, filmed, then that's the one with Robert Pattinson. So these are all, like, okay, iffy, iffy um, plot lines. Um, it says it's a dreamlike plot that involves geopolitics. Man, I don't know if I'm going to like this book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. All right. What is Sagarius? Sagacious? Sagacious? <sighs> is this book going to be like over my head? Define Sagacious. 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 Having or showing keen mental discernment and good judgment. What? Having or showing a keen mental discernment. Basically, you're shrewd. They were sagacious enough to avoid any outright confrontation. I don't mind reading, uh, learning new words, but ugh, nobody uses that word in, like, everyday speech. That's so stuffy. Although I guess it sounds pretty. Sagacious heads with sensual faces. A, mis a matched pair like brother and sister. Hmm. Well, it's a Galois. Galois. No. L O I S E. Okay. Ga Gao Luis. Oh, it's a cigarette. Okay. Gall Woman in French is a brand of cigarette of French manufacturer. French cigarettes, got it. There was a Galois burning in her hand. <laughs> Again, I. Mm. Good morning, uh, BookTube. Today is Tuesday, and I am extremely tired. Today I decided to go with a grunge look. Um, <clears throat> so yesterday I did get through most of the books. I did not read 20 minutes of The Waking Forest. I'm going to start my morning with that today. Um, yeah. All of these books are very, very different, which is exciting because you don't want to read the same book, you know, over and over and over again in the same time period. Um, so that's exciting. I am, I told you guys I was going to put them in ranking order of which ones I liked the best. And I did do that. I'm putting, I'm putting Fox Low at the bottom. I haven't started The Waking Forest yet, but I, I can't imagine it being any more weird than this one. Not that this one is hard to read. I just, I don't like cults. And I didn't know this was going to be a cult book. And I'm assuming it's a cult book. I don't even know if that's the truth or not. Um, it just seems like a cult book. Uh, and then it's consumed. Um, this one took a while to get into. I don't really like the writing style. Um, it seems really wordy. Like a more wordy than it should be and I think it's because it's a director that's writing this um I don't know I don't know uh I, I know I was teasing the names at the beginning and it is French so I'm sorry for those that are from France and I was teasing the name it's just it's such a mouthful you know what I mean like I'm sure our names can be a mouthful as well but 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what I was going with that. And then the next one was, are you, are you sleeping? This one is, um, this one is a, a, a maybe not murder kind of book. Like the guy who was put away, he might be innocent. And then, um, we have The Fledgling. This one's really good. I like vampires, so I'm definitely looking forward to reading this one. I think I'll take this one with me to the laundromat today, um, because I do have to do laundry. And then I'm still buddy reading this with Ashley. I am a little bit behind, so I must power through this one, um, before I go to lunch. This is, uh, I have a a lunch date with a friend at 12 and it is 1046 so I think I'll read this one until about 1130 about an hour and then I will start heading to lunch and then I figured I would leave this one for last only because I really don't have very much to read and I don't find myself having this this isn't gonna take very long to read so I'm gonna put this off until the very end um, yeah and, uh, yeah, The Waking Forest, I haven't read it yet. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know where it stands in between the other ones. So I'll pick that one up probably later. Um, yeah, I didn't come back last night, as you can tell, because it's a new day. And, uh, it's because my husband came home. If my husband is home, um, there's no chance of me doing anything in life. It's, it's either, um, he is, um, bothering me in a playful way. My husband and I, you guys have no, you guys know this story. Got my hair. By the way, I've been using Pros, that shampoo that is expensive. It's $25 a bottle. I'm an adult, so I can buy expensive shampoo. Um, I don't know why I said that. There, there are adults who can't afford expensive shampoo. And, um, I've had hair loss for the last, I started when I was, th so for nine years, I have been red meat free. I haven't had red meat in nine years. I only eat chicken and turkey and fish. Um, so I'm not getting the nutrients that I need that I usually get from red meat. And so my hair falls out from the root. So the root uh, like the, the hair follicle is still attached when they fall out. So I know that I can grow my hair back according to Google. Um, I just haven't figured out, uh, anything good to use on my hair. So anyways, I've been trying all these like not like paraben free, silicone free, all these kinds of free, um, shampoos and conditioners and they've worked for like the first month and then my hair got used to it and then it started getting all like gross again. And so I bought the Pros um, shampoo and conditioner because it's supposed to like be your particular shampoo and conditioner. It's not like a one size fits all kind of thing. Like if you go to the grocery store and you buy whatever they have on the shelves. Um, I actually really like this. I, my hair is very smooth. Like, so I don't have tangles. You see, you see, you see, I don't have the tangles. Um, it's very shiny, which I like, but it does get super greasy at the roots. And that might be just because I have a very oily scalp, but also I only wash my hair once a week. That might be gross to some people, um, but my hair is so, so fine uh, that it's just, it gets dis it gets disgusting regardless if I wash it every day or if I don't. So I just don't because I feel like having my natural oils on my scalp is healthier. It makes my head less itchy. Um, now that I'm not in public, I wash my hair once a week. When I was working, I would wash my hair every three days. Um, so like twice a week instead of once. But my body's been used to only washing it once a week. This has nothing to do with books. Um, again, I feel like I, I like to talk to you guys like you guys are my friends. I'm going to a f to lunch with my friend just so I can talk. Um, I haven't been out very much since COVID. 
and I'm going to see if this restaurant has outdoor seating because I don't want to sit inside a restaurant and breathe in other people's air. I don't mind being outside and eating because then I feel like the wind blows people's gross away. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I was, oh, I was talking about my husband. Um, he is my best friend, like, hands down. I've been with him since we were 16. Uh, we were friends for a year before we started. Hey, hush up. We were um, friends for a year before we actually started like going out. Uh, and then, yeah, we've been in several since then. So he like follows me around. And I was telling him this last night, we were thinking about moving and getting a house for the first time. Um, we've lived in this apartment, which is a two, two bedroom apartment for the last 15 years. Um, my children are massive and there's like no room in this house anymore to function. And so I was telling my husband how weird it's going to be when we move because there's nowhere to hide in this house, you know? And if I'm talking in the living in the living room my husband can hear me in the bedroom because it's only 10 steps away <laughs> it's so tiny and so I was saying oh my gosh when we get a house it's gonna be bizarre because we're actually gonna be like separated from each other like if you're in your room and I'm in the kitchen I won't be able to hear you unless you really shout and you know I won't be able to hear the kids and I feel like Sometimes I feel like I really want a space of my own so I can like, if I'm not feeling, you know, hot, I can, I can, not hot as in, you know, cute, but like if I don't feel good and I'm maybe emotional and I want to like cry or something, I don't want to, um, I don't want to have anybody going, why are you crying? <laughs> and my husband doesn't do that, but my youngest son will say mommy what's wrong I I saw you're crying why are you crying can I help you from crying and I'm like shut up stop talking about it because that makes me feel even worse um yeah <laughs> anyways um this is a, the very longest rant possible and I haven't even like done anything so I will see you guys in, after lunch or maybe I'll film some I'll show you guys what the menu looks like I don't know I'll, I'll in introduce you guys to my friend maybe if she um, doesn't mind that anyways I'll talk to you guys later